We will praise you, O Lord, with our whole heart. We will show forth all your marvelous words, and we will be glad and rejoice in you. We'll sing praise to your name, O Most High. I want to give glory and praise to Jesus Christ, no matter what's happening to me. You know, he's the, the bomb, not me. All right, let's talk about this thing here that Daniel Jacob said concerning Canelo. So Daniel Jacob said that Canelo is a much smaller boxer than, say, Gennady Golovkin, and that he's even bigger than Gennady Golovkin. And truthfully, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Daniel Jacobs is probably bigger than Gennady Golovkin, so that is not really a surprise to me. But here's the interesting thing about the whole thing. He's saying that Canelo will have to face a bigger, stronger opponent, and so that because Danny Jacobs brings that to the table, you know, and he thinks that Drew Triple G beat Canelo twice, that he thinks that he is the advantage over Canelo Alvarez. Now, like I said to you guys before, Canelo's somewhere between 5'7 and 5'9 when he's wearing boots. So Canelo is actually shorter than Gennady Golovkin and Daniel Jacobs. Also, Canelo, having come up from a lower weight class, can be considered smaller to some degree than, say, Daniel Jacobs and Golovkin. What Danny Jacobs is really leaving out of the equation is the fact that Canelo has faced Triple G twice. And if we do recall, Triple G actually took more damage in the second fight than the first, where Canelo was walking down Triple G for almost the entire fight. Now, how does a smaller guy walk down a bigger boxer for the entire fight? How does he do that if he's supposedly the smaller guy? How is that possible? Not only is that possible, but he also was able to deal with Triple G's power. He was also able to uh, beat down Triple G and answer him shot for shot. So if Danny Jacobs is really thinking that Canelo is somehow smaller, and on top of that, Canelo moving up to super middleweight and stopping a super middleweight, I don't think Danny Jacobs should really keep that in his mind. I don't know what he's trying to do, convince himself that he's a bigger, stronger guy, and that somehow Canelo... Being the smaller guy, he's going to be able to take advantage of Canelo that way. I just don't see it. Maybe it's something he's trying to convince himself with, but I think that is something I think that's misleading to Daniel Jacobs. If I were Daniel Jacobs, I wouldn't keep that in my mind at all because uh, Canelo has shown two things. He's shown he can face a supposedly bigger, stronger opponent and literally walk them down and impose his will on them. And he's also showed that he can also face a much bigger opponent at a higher weight class and stop them. That's what he's basically showing. He's showing he can stop bigger opponents and he can walk down bigger opponents. So if Daniel Jacobs is thinking somewhere in the back of his mind that he's this bigger, stronger guy and that's going to make a difference against Canelo Alvarez, I just don't think that's, that's something you should really picture in your mind. If he's talking about skill for skill, that's a another story. But when he's talking about size and bigger and stronger, that's a dumb, that's a dumb road to go down. Like I said to you guys before, it's not about only being bigger and stronger. And you can be someone who's naturally the bigger opponent. doesn't mean you're naturally the stronger opponent as well, uh, as Canelo showed against Triple G the second time around. Um, I just think people with a lot of bias, and when you have a bias in your mind, and you're thinking somehow that Canelo lost to Triple G in the second fight where he clearly won, um, if you're thinking that in your mind, you're going to go in that fight and you're going to lose to Canelo. I don't know what he's trying to convince. Daniel Jacobs is in an alternate reality. He's trying to convince himself that um, Canelo didn't accomplish the win against Triple G. He clearly did. And not only did he clearly beat Triple G the second time, but if Daniel Jacobs is under the delusion that he didn't beat Triple G, Daniel Jacobs is going to get beat also in this fight. Okay, that's just not the right... Like Canelo was saying, if Daniel Jacobs is trying to make excuses before the fight even lands... Talking about, you know, the, the same day weigh-in that may have to be done, where the IBF may implement it, then he's looking to lose. You have to start thinking about winning and beating an opponent. So, I, if I were Daniel Jacobs right now, I would not depend on my size and my height. I would try to use my size and my height to my advantage, but I don't think your size and your height, Daniel Jacobs, is going to keep Canelo from getting to you and touching you to the body, particularly to the body he's going to touch you. And then he's going to work up top to your head. And he's going to break you down. And he's going to stop you if that's what you're counting on. Your size and your height and your conditioning. That's not going to be enough to stop Canelo Alvarez from getting to you. 
The other thing I noticed was in Danny Jacobs' fight with Triple G, Triple G dropped Daniel Jacobs, if I am not mistaken. That never happened against Canelo. Triple G never dropped Canelo in either fight. In fact, in the second fight, Triple G got his face busted up and Canelo was beating the crap out of him and walking him down, something Daniel Jacobs was not able to do. Daniel Jacobs was able to push Triple G back. He was not able to walk Triple G down. So uh, Canelo realized that you just had to push back Triple G and rough him up, and there was nothing else Triple G would be able to do, which clearly he was able to do in the fight against Triple G. Triple G had no response. He was trying to come back and, 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 and tangle with Canelo, and Canelo would just not let him. He was not going to let him. He was not going to take a step back. And if Daniel Jacobs thinks, because, I mean, Daniel Jacobs didn't win against Triple G, right? If he thinks he's going to go in against an opponent that somehow is sub subpar to Triple G, and if he feels that, you know, uh, somehow Canelo is smaller than Triple G, so he doesn't have to have that respect for Canelo, he's going to have a rude awakening. He's going to be on the canvas looking up at the ceiling, okay? Because Canelo is that kind of dude. He will knock you down, all right? He's dangerous like that, okay? And never mind his reach, never mind his height, he one of them small guys that's kind of like Floyd Mayweather. He, he going to find a way to get to you. Okay, and he's got more of a vicious streak than even Floyd had. So if he, he touch you up, he gonna take you out. Okay, so I don't know if Daniel Jacobs understands what he's getting himself into. The statements he's making tell me that he's ignorant of the skill set that Canelo has and what Canelo brings to the table and what he's, what he's actually about to face. If I were Daniel Jacobs, I reevaluate the words I'm saying to convince myself that my size and my height, my reach is gonna make a difference. His size, height, and reach is not going to make a difference if he don't have the skills to be able to deal with a guy who can negate those things. Okay, Triple G has an excellent jab, yet Canelo's been landing body shots on him and jabbing him and all kinds of stuff. All right, how is Canelo having free reign over Triple G and landing all them shots on Triple G if he has such a good jab? So, being a good jabber is not enough with these kinds of fighters. I keep on telling people this over and over again. You can be as good a jabber you know, you think you can just stick and move, box, and go in and out, you know, attack the opponent at certain points in time. This is a different opponent. Triple G, Daniel Jacobs could just attack Triple G, and Triple G just cover up. He wouldn't counterpunch Daniel Jacobs. Canelo ain't going to be that. Canelo's looking for Danny Jacobs to come to him so he can counterpunch him. Okay, because that's what Canelo does. Not only that, but I wouldn't be surprised Canelo be walking down Danny Jacobs as well looking to also initiate some uh, action against Danny Jacobs. So you're going to see those both things. And Danny Jacobs is a good boxer. You know, he can go southpaw. He can do orthodox. He can do various things in that ring. But if he thinks he's just going to come in there and bully Canelo, he's going to realize really quickly off the bat that is just not the case here. Okay, Canelo can do all kinds of things. He can, he can make Danny Jacobs come to him, set traps. He can walk Danny Jacobs down. You know, he can fight Danny Jacobs in the center of the ring. You know, he could stand right in front of Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs throw a flurry of punches and none of them hit Canelo, okay? This dude can do it all, all right? So, and Floyd Mayweather knows that. He knows Canelo is like the next right now. And so, Floyd ain't got nothing really negative to say about Canelo. Sometimes he says some negative things about poke jabs at Oscar De La Hoya, really. But Canelo's, Canelo's that good. And you guys just have to respect him, you know? And the sooner you guys respect him after he beats Danny Jacobs, you're going to give him his respect, maybe. You're going to give him his due. Because they, nobody, Canelo has Dr. Dutch. Nobody. You know, and, and I hear Danny Jacobs kind of whining about the IBF rules and how, you know, those things were waived for the last fight. I don't even know what last fight he's talking about because Danny Jacobs never had a unification bout. You do understand that, right, people? Danny Jacobs hasn't had a unification bout. He's never unified with anybody. So when he's talking about this is a unification bout and so they got that waived, what is he talking about? He's never unified with anybody. All right, he became world champion just recently. The last time he was world champion, he faced Dimitri Pirog and lost his world championship. So I'm not too sure what Danny Jacobs is talking about. He's talking about unification. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, when he faced Gennady Golovkin, he was the, I believe, I think he was the WBA regular at the time. Golovkin was the WBA champion. So I don't know what Danny Jacobs is talking about in terms of unification. He never had a unification bout. All right. So it's all these kinds of things that you have to do, sift through, listen to the BS. Yes, I, I, I like Danny Jacobs. Yes, I like Canelo Alvarez. But I know what Canelo can bring to the table. I, and Danny Jacobs, I don't think he understands what Canelo brings to the table. He wouldn't be saying those kinds of comments if he had to face Canelo. He wouldn't be saying those kinds of things. Size and strength don't mean squat if you don't have the skills to back it up. 
And Danny Jacobs got some skills, don't get it wrong. And he's probably the most skilled middleweight aside from Canelo in that division with the most amount of experience and the resume to back it up. Okay, I say all of these things because probably there are better middleweights than Danny Jacobs in the middleweight division. We can't really know until everything settles down. But um, as of now, Danny Jacobs is the most qualified middleweight to face Canelo Alvarez. Uh, he deserves this fight. I hope he does the best he can do. But honestly speaking, we know what Danny Jacobs brings to the table. And we know what Canelo brings to the table. And I'm telling you, if Danny Jacobs don't understand what Canelo brings to the table, he's going to be in big trouble. Because if he thinks this is a smaller guy coming in to deal with him, he's going he gonna to have a rude awakening rather quickly. Okay? And everybody's talking about Danny Jacobs is speedy and he's got quickness. Canelo got explosive speed. He got explosive quickness. He got very economical footwork. Canelo has economical footwork. All right? And he knows how to cut a ring off a certain kind of way. All right? So, if you guys are thinking that this is just going to be an easy walk in the park for either Canelo or Danny Jacobs, no, I don't think so. But I don't see, I just don't see Danny Jacobs with the tools and skills he has, he could prove me wrong, beating a Canelo Alvarez just like that. He's talking about the guy being smaller, that you never, never underestimate your opponent. And this is one of the things he's already underestimating. He's calling Canelo a smaller opponent. That's a dumb idea, man. That's, that's super dumb, okay? I'm just saying. All right, you guys. Have a great one.